Building up your own bike is really satisfying since you can handpick each component to truly make it your own. Here are the essential tools that you'll need to build up your own fixed gear bike. Be sure to watch until the end where I'll give a couple of best practices for choosing your tools and for building up your bike that'll save you a lot of headache in the long run. What's up, I'm Zach Gallardo. Life is short, but don't make it shorter, so ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous, and be sure to subscribe to watch fixed gear videos just like this one every Thursday and Saturday afternoon. You can find the complete list of tools and where to buy them in the description. First tool that you'll need is a set of metric Allen keys. It's important to get metric Allen keys because all the bolts on bikes are in metric. Stay away from Imperial or English or Freedom units or whatever they're called because if you use those on your bike instead, you're going to round out your bolts over time. For home use, I like to use Allen keys that are individual ones. You can get better angles and more leverage with a set like this. So save the complete set for when you go out for rides and when you need convenience. Allen keys will be your best friend when you're building your bike. Use these to adjust just about all of your content points. It's important to get a good set of these because you will be using them a lot. The second tool that you'll need is a 15 millimeter wrench. You'll use this for putting on your wheels and pedals. The next tools that you'll need are bottom bracket tools. For fixers, there's two main types of bottom brackets. The first more common type are bottom brackets that use spindles, which will use this tool. And the second less common type are external bearing bottom brackets, which uses this tool. So be sure to get the bottom bracket tool that is right for your bottom bracket. And of course, you can't just use these tools on their own. For instance, this bottom bracket tool I use with an adjustable wrench to get some leverage, while this other bottom bracket tool slides nicely into this chain whip so you can use it for leverage, which then brings us to the chain whip. You'll use the chain whip to install and to take off your cog. You wrap the chain around your cog and use the lever to tighten it down. And of course, you need to keep your cog in place once it's on your hub. That's what the lockering wrench is for. This is the hose-on lockering wrench that I use. I found that it's really durable and it's machined really well and it fits into most lock rings. Compare that to this Pocke lockering wrench, which isn't machined as well and actually has rounded out. And because it's rounded out, it's much more likely to slip and that's just a bad time. Something that you don't exactly need to build up your bike, but it's good to have is a crank puller. All you need to do to uninstall your square taper crank set is to thread this piece into your cranks and then thread this lever into that piece and it should pop right off. Speaking of tools that aren't essential but are nice to have, you can check out these reasonably dangerous summer tees at the bonfire link in the description. They are a limited run and we will be doing the last printing of them in about two weeks, so be sure to get yours while you still can. Tire levers are another good tool to have that you don't exactly need to build up your bike. You can use tire levers to help seat the tire on your rim if you have especially stubborn tires. I actually prefer not to use tire levers when I'm installing tires because in my experience, it tends to pinch the tube and the rim and sometimes I end up getting a flat. If you're installing brakes, you're going to need some wire cutters because when you buy brake cables, they come a lot longer than you need. It's also a good idea to have a set of pliers to crimp on the end caps. Probably the second most important tool is the track pump. This track pump right here is the Topeak Joe Blow and it's really well built and it has a gauge that is pretty accurate. Having the correct tire pressure will allow you to optimize your speed and your comfort and it'll also help you get less flats. Your second best friend when you're building a bike is grease. The rule of thumb is that when metal is contacting metal, you should probably grease it, but of course there are some exceptions to the rule. Two of those exceptions are the steer tube and the spindle of your crank set, but everything else that's threaded, you pretty much grease it. Another thing that's optional is blue Loctite. Blue Loctite will lock the bolt into place once it dries out. I like to use this for my chain ring bolts, although it's not completely necessary, I just like to be a little extra safe. This is a chain breaker and you can use it to install your chain. You're going to need you want to cut your chain down length because when you buy a new chain, it usually comes with way more chain than you need. When installing chains, some people prefer to use the master or quick link, but I prefer to use the chain breaker. I've never broken a chain before and this is easier for me. Another good tool to have is frame saver if you have a steel frame. Pretty much you spray the inside of your steel frame about every year and it'll make your frame resistant to rust. So feel free to ride in the rain to your heart's content. And to make your workflow 
of building your bike a lot better. I recommend using a bike stand, or if you're too cheap like me for a bike stand, you can use a tree. Once you put your saddle and seat post into the frame, you can hang it from the saddle so it will elevate your bike and make it easier to work on while you're standing. The important thing to note is to always clamp it by the seat post. If you clamp it by the seat tube, or especially the top tube, you can dent your frame. Another tool you might need is a Phillips screwdriver. You'll use this to secure toe clips to the pedals. A torque wrench is good to have, but also isn't 100% essential. A torque wrench will let you know how tight is tight enough. Each bolt for each part has a range of torque that the manufacturer specifies that would be ideal for that part. Some people are religious torque wrench users, but I don't think it matters too much as long as you have a good head on your shoulders. And lastly, once your bike is complete, you might want to weigh it. It's good to have a scale. If you don't want to buy a fancy scale like this, you can just weigh yourself while holding the bike on a bathroom scale, then weigh yourself without the bike and do some quick maths. This looks like a lot of tools up front, but I really do think that it's worth it in the long run. If you get good on repairing, maintaining, and working on your bike with all these tools, it saves you a lot of time and money in the long run. Knowing how to fix whatever is wrong with your bike also gives you the freedom to fix mechanical issues on the road so you can be more confident to tackle bigger and longer rides. And yeah, it does look like a lot of tools, especially if you're buying everything up front. But if you're on a budget and you don't have the time, you can always check out bike co-ops. These places are pretty much bike workshops where you can pay five bucks and borrow their tools. Also, it's a good idea to spend a little bit more on tools. If you skimp out on your tools, it can lead to a lot of headache down the line. Cheap tools aren't always machined very well, which makes it harder to do the job properly. They also just make it a pain in the neck to work with and good tools pretty much pay for themselves. As a general rule of thumb, Park Tool tends to make really good tools and they are pretty much the industry standard. Although there are some exceptions, tire levers is one of those. These don't hold up very well. Instead, Pedro's tire levers are a lot better. Just whenever you're shopping for tools, do your research and see what's good. And then there's the question of why don't I just get a multi-tool? Well, multi-tools, in my opinion, they do a lot of jobs worse. The problem with multi-tools is that the more tools you add to one, the less useful it gets because the tools get in the way of the ones that you're trying to use. Instead, I like to keep a set of tools that just do one job really well at home so I can do my job really well at home so I won't need a multi-tool when I'm out on the road. And for some good building practices, if you have to force anything while you're building your bike, you're probably doing it wrong and you might end up damaging a component. Grease your threads because if you don't, the parts could seize up and getting them off your bike could be a big pain and could also end up damaging your bike. And if you're building for the first time, be sure to do it really slowly. If you find yourself getting frustrated at all, take a break. If you work on your bike while you're frustrated, probably likely to damage something. If you're like me and you're not particularly good with mechanics and it's your first time building, expect it to be a bit difficult. It takes experience to get comfortable with working with all these tools. You can find all the tools that I use here in the kit link in the description. And if you like this t-shirt design, be sure to check it out at the bonfire link in the description. It is a limited run and we will be printing the last run in about two weeks. So get yours while you still can. And Fixie Famous shout outs to Mikey Sincox, Otsi Verto, Connor Kerrigan, Albert Wu, Marek Javecki, Robert Terpstra, Blue Tick Hound, Duella Zero One, Evil Erdy, Mark Van Deventer, and Jazeel for making these fixed gear videos possible through their support on Patreon. If you haven't ridden your bike yet today, stop watching me right now and go out and ride your bike because life is short, but don't make it shorter, so ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.